Welcome. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Vern Glenn of CBS Affiliate, KPIX TV in San Francisco, and Russell Jackman. At H- What's Russell. left of me? What's, What's left, left of you? Yeah, that's right. You're, uh, you're recovering from an injury, aren't you? Yes, unfortunately. Very badly bruised shoulder here. Oh, uh, yeah, all broken from just trying to walk across the street. With that's my a very, it's a very scooter. dangerous sport walking across the street. It um, is. <laughs> at each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. We're uh, talking again general sports trivia, and then looking at these uh, uh, questions, uh, I think you guys will get at least may, at least one of them. All right. And, if you uh, say so. If I say so, yes. Let's see here. Uh, so, guys, when we come back, uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. The off-season workout bonuses for NFL players uh, and then also 2020 baseball season. You know, it looks like people are so bored that they're just starting to talk about, you know, the best team of all time and the best players for each position because who, who knows what else is going on, you know? So, um, well, I can, I can only speak at the, at the local TV level. Uh, the, the San Francisco market essentially has become, I don't know, Roanoke, Virginia, with, with no teams, you know, with, 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 with no games, nothing. So we've had to truly be completely local. We, we've been digging up sports stories that we normally would never dig up before. I'm doing a feature later on today on paper football. Remember paper football when oh, we were oh, kids? Oh, you know, bunker football. Where you, yeah, you, yeah, you, just, you just flick it back and forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it, it's come to that. Oh, my God. Yeah, my, my well, brother. Well, uh, let, me, uh, let me also say something else. That, that, you know, it has kind of been nice in some ways that we've had a chance to reflect on the greatness of what the Bay Area has done in the last 10 years. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about that. All right. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Russell Jackman and Vern Glenn. So, Vern, when we kept the break, you were starting to talk about what we used to call bonker football, which you make a take a piece of uh, regular paper, 8 by yep. 11, yep. hold it into a triangle. That comes the football. Mm-hmm. You flick it across a table. Yep. And it um, uh, hangs over the side. You try to uh, kick a field goal. Kick a field, you exactly. try to kick a field goal, exactly. Yeah. So we used to we we used to play that all the time. We, like we used to make goalposts with a little net behind it, and you flick it into into the goalpost. Well, this is this, this is old school. You just you, yeah, you take your put your fingers together and make it upright. Right? Yeah, exactly. And you try and kick it right through the upright. So uh, I'll be doing a feature on that today. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday I had to yesterday I had to do a feature on. On a young lady who could be the next uh, Sabrina Anescu. Uh, Sabrina Anescu, of course, is the outstanding Oregon guard who swept every single individual College Player of the Year award. She's a young lady out of the East Bay here in the Bay Area, and she'll be the number one pick in the WNBA draft, which happens a week from oh yeah, I guess uh, later later on the next week. But um, but yeah, we've uh, so somehow some way we're, we're we're finding stories. Even ESPN is doing shout-outs to outgoing seniors whose spring seasons were I wiped out. I saw that out. last night. I saw and, that last uh, night. They, they talked about Mill Valley. That was really impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, they did a little shout-out to the uh, Tamapayas High School girls' swim team. They also shouted out last week to the uh, San Domenico boys' basketball team. That's in a tiny pocket for you viewers out there in Marin County here in the Bay Area. And they did a shout-out to uh, – City College of San Francisco. They had a 30-0 and record at the junior college level, and they were going for a championship, but that season was wiped out. So even SportsCenter giving shout-outs to the, the outgoing seniors. Okay, now back to important things. Bonker football, all right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's a few different ways to kick the, the field goal, the, how you put the, uh, the, the actual football. Mm-hmm. Now, I find the best way is to put it upside down so you have it like that. Oh, put, I never thought about that. Yeah, and that's, to me, the most accurate. Some people like to put it on its side and do it that way, which I think you go further, but, but it's not as accurate, though. Okay. So when, you, now, when, you, when you invert it the way that you did before, Edward, yeah. 
are you are, are aren't you turning it sideways to 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 to, to, to kick the butt? No, so, you just you, you just keep it uh, with the, the, the highest part at the top down yeah. the bottom. Put your fingers like that right on it. You know, put the top like that, and then just flick it right through. And uh, that, believe it or not, that's the most accurate. Because otherwise, wow, straight you on. Top, wow. Yeah, you can't get high enough with it. I'm going to talk about something that has maybe a little bit more relevance to real sports. <laughs> so, and that is, um, I, one of the ways that I've been occupying my time is that um, a friend of mine and I, my best friend from college, um, we developed, a, the, do you guys remember a, a game called Status Pro? Um, uh, they had a baseball one and they had a basketball one. Um, Avalon Hill created it. And it's a video a, game? or it, Yeah, it's a statistical game done with cards and dice and uh, my friend and I took the original game from Avalon Hill in the 80s and in 1991 we drove across the country together and we modified it to become what we call a game called Cosmic Hoops and so we have cards you can see here oh look at that of every NBA player you've seen one from Happy Hairston from 1972-73 that are the statistics of every single basketball player from every season going all the way back to the early 70s. And we've played every team against every team going all the way back from last. Every year we create a new set of statistics for that year's teams. And we play every team against each other going all the way back to, so you know. How, how, so how does that work? You roll the uh, dice? What you do is you have a, a – a, you have dice and you have cards and, and what's called an action deck and, and each particular um, uh, 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 play, you know, like for each, each card is considered about four seconds. And you either pass or shoot. Um, the ball can be blocked, can be stolen. Um, uh, uh, the balls can go out of bounds. We have everything covered. We can, you can dunk the ball. You can shoot three pointers. You can Technical foul even. for pushing the ref. Oh yeah, all of that stuff. We have fights. We have uh, 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 we have in-game injuries. Some are more severe than others. Like some will take you out for a whole game. Some will get you out for a few points. Some will get you out for a half or a quarter. We have um, uh, uh, we, we can make all-star teams. We have ratings for every player, so you can make your own custom teams based on a number level. So we can say build a team with a like a three hundred level salary cap. You can add Kareem from the 70s. You could add Elijah Wine. You could add Dr. J. You could add Rick Barry. You could so add. How do you, so, how, do, how does that work? So, you roll the dice and then you. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah, what, to, we, you, what we usually do is you, you start off with called an action. The, the very first card is called the action card. And then you go and you decide whether you want to pass or shoot, you know, and what you want to do on defense. You match everybody up man to man. But you can have switches and all that other stuff. And so we've been playing that literally for 30 years. 1990, we started in 1991. So next year we'll make 30 years. We've been oh, playing. you still play it. We have like a thousand. Oh, I play it now. I play it every night because it's the only statistical sports stuff that I can get, the, uh, the sports stats that are new. So, you know, um, and hey, it's a lot more realistic than paper football. Do you, <laughs> do you, yeah, but, but, but at least paper football is it's right in front of you. You're you're physically flicking that paper back and forth. You're actually kicking field goals. You're you're earning points. But uh, but uh, yeah, Mr. Jackman, you're uh, you're 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 a little bit more cerebral than I am. Yeah. I have to just I I have to go for the I need shiny stats. Yeah. I need stats. I am addicted to getting statistics. <laughs> no, so so I, without getting statistics every day, new fresh stats of stuff. My friend and I will talk about these games. It's really allowed me to, like, I can tell you, you know, the statistics of Tom Sanders from 1972-73. I can tell you about Steve Kuberski. I can tell you about, you know, Howard Finkel. I can tell okay. you about guys that are 8, 9, and 10th men on the yes, bench. But, yes, but, uh, but with bonker football, at least Vern and I get physical exercise. Yeah, no, well, I get as much exercise rolling the dice as you do, yeah. like in the, uh, yeah, comparatively. So you know, you one know, of these well, days I'll have to give you guys a score sheet so you can see what we're talking see, about. See what you're doing. You know, it's interesting, too, because I'm thinking, Vern, I think a lot about you during this time with this, uh, uh, you know, shelter in place. I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, you're really scrambling for stories. 
the other night we had a uh, we had a Glenn family pull up challenge that we put on the air, and so because we have, we have a pull up bar that fits in the doorway yeah. of, of, of of these rooms, and so uh, so the my my three sons they they <laughs> they they threw the gauntlet down uh, for the old man to say you know how many I could I could do, and uh, the the first three guys went. And uh, they, I mean, they were just, you know, they were just going up and down with ease. Yeah. Just, yeah, you get nothing. And I went, I, I, I got maybe four, maybe okay. four. But, uh, but it was, it, it, it was pretty, pretty good comedy TV. So we put it on the air. We got to get oh, a yeah. nice little response. But uh, yeah, so wait, you can do half. I can even do half a pull up, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, hey, Vern, you must be uh, Fred McMurray since you got my three sons. My three sons. Yep, eating us yeah. out of house and home. But uh, oh, you know what? Awesome. Hey, what are you going to do, you know? No. Yeah, I got, I got a, 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 you know, a boy and a girl, so it's like one and a half mouths. Right. Okay, guys, we're going to cut to our next commercial break, and this time we're going to have a trivia question here. Uh, the first trivia question is Kathy Rigby. Remember her? Uh, she I sure was, do. She was the first woman to do what for Sports Illustrated? That's our trivia question. Uh, email edward at sportsecon101.com. The answer to this question, Kathy Rigby was the first woman to do what for Sports Illustrated? And uh, this, I forgot to mention last time, but this segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, still providing mortgage investments that are currently yielding about 7.75%. Even in today's low interest market, that is a good deal. You got to give them a call uh, or check them out on their website, uh, pacificprivatemoney.com. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, and we're going to be right back. Okay. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Bert Glenn and Russell Jackman. Our first trivia question was, Kathy Rigby, remember her from uh, the Olympics? Uh, what was that, 1968, I think? Uh, she I was, was a, born in 67. Just okay, so you, so you don't remember. Part of that, no. <laughs> I remember Kathy Rigby. Remember Kathy Rigby. I, 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 even, I even did a story with Kathy Rigby. Really? Yes. Ah, well, then maybe you'll know this uh, one. She was the first woman to do what for Sports Illustrated? Pose in a swimsuit? No, I, w I would imagine, you know, pose with, with uh, doing some, some, sort of, some sort of gymnast move, pose, whatever. You, because you, you guys are, you, are very, you're very close, actually. She was the first woman to pose nude. For Sports Illustrated, is that right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how exactly how they how they did that because uh, you know it's, it's not Playboy magazine, so they must have uh, kind of altered it a little bit. Yeah, uh, I did. I, I did it years ago. I did a story with Kathy Rigby, fully clothed. Yeah. She uh, <laughs> she was the she was the lead in a theatrical production of Peter Pan, which she actually oh, played right. Peter yeah. Pan, and then I got on stage and she you know she sprinkled some magic dust on me, and then uh, boom. <laughs> I was in the air through the uh, through the mechanics of uh, the uh, the theater, but uh, oh, but she was pretty cool. Yeah, it's a very pretty uh, young lady, uh, as I remember. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see here, guys. Um, get this on my computer here. So I was reading something about on the off season uh, workout bonuses for NFL players while the virus is still going on, and uh, Teddy Bridgewater. His deal includes a $250,000 workout bonus. You guys heard anything about that? Uh, the, the, I, I, everybody's got individual contracts based on what their agent has negotiated for them. And, so, so, and, 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 and I know the NFL season runs March through 1st through March 1st of, 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 of the following year. So everybody's got a different deal. But, uh, but I, I'm, I'm curious to... To, to know how this is really going to work out, translate according to, you know, yeah, there, there's some guys that have bonuses kicked in if they show up for X amount of mini camps or X amount of OTAs. You know, yeah, all these incentives. Like, how are you going to reach these incentives if if you can't even, you know, get to any of these meetings, camps, stuff like that? And, Let's and, face and, it, the optics are horrible. I mean, you know, when people are out of work and so many people are stuck at home, nobody wants to hear about somebody getting $250,000 just to, just to show yeah. up someplace. Yeah, and the, the NBA, they're, they're, they're having negotiations with the players' union about, I guess, maybe putting some sort of you know, 
fund together some 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 sort of uh, some sort of fund that would that would that would pretty much necessitate players having to kind of you know kick in a certain amount of money to create some kind of slush fund or whatever, and then and then at the NBA level, certain players they've already been paid. LeBron James, he's already been paid. He just got paid up front, where some of these other guys they. You know, they live, you know, pay period to pay period. And mm-hmm. there was talk of, uh, well, does LeBron give some of that money back because he's been unable to work? There's been, there have been no games. I mean, uh, there's, what, 16, 17 regular season games left, you know, in, in the regular season. So it, it's it's just a mess. It's just, it's just yeah. a complete The NBA mess. is never going to finish those 17 games. If they're lucky, they can get into the playoffs. But there's no way they could play the, the remaining 17. Yeah. yeah, and then and then with Major League Baseball, now there's talk of maybe a maybe a four month season once they get going, and so mm-hmm. uh, are, are the players going to buy into that, or are they just going all of a sudden just bam leave their families for four months and then and go play however many games? Yeah, yeah. why why not? And, I mean, why? And, and, then, and then when do you start? You know, can can you start in late May? I, I know there was some plan in place where where where, where that could be possible to pull it off if everything COVID nineteen was lifted, but I, I I I'm just curious to see when these guys, how these guys, w- w- wherever even get out there, and are fans going to be able to actually see these games in person? Yeah. I don't think so. Think of how lucky the NFL was to get the Super Bowl out of the way, yeah. Yeah. and just within a couple of weeks later, you know, this all went down. What if the the COVID virus had popped up like right before the Super Bowl. You yeah. know, yeah, I had an interview with a couple of I had an interview with a couple of football players a few days ago. One place for the Houston Texans. His brother is training and and getting ready for the the NFL draft. And uh, I asked him, "What well, guys? What do you think?" And they said, "Boy, they they just didn't know they could see, definitely see the the virtual reality draft, which is going to take place where all the general managers, everybody works out of their home and they pick out of their home. But after that." Uh, again, mini camps, OTA stuff like yeah. that. I don't know how you're ever even gonna gonna pull this off. And yeah, I know doing, I'm, doing the draft is not a big deal. Uh, yeah, because you, know, you don't have to see the players right there on stage. You know, you, you easily. I mean, these guys aren't they always on the phone anyway with uh, you know other other people around the country? And anyway. yeah, that's yeah that that that's how they live. And then, and and then to go one bigger, a few days ago, our president met with. 12 of the movers and shakers, the power players, whether it's uh, from the Power 5 college conferences and these, these, these commissioners of the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, they, they, he met with them to really kind of talk about what, you know, what we're doing. Because, I mean, everybody wants to get back to work, but, but the yeah. question is when. And I know President Trump said, boy, he'd like to see something happen August and September, uh, it, it got back to Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. He goes, uh-uh, I don't think so. I well, mean, that's uh, the thing. you got to be careful about it. another a second wave. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's and, what happened in 1980. I, 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 really, I, I really don't see a scenario where football could start on time. I mean, I could see college football being played in the spring. Wow. Yeah, I remember uh, hearing that the uh, Spanish flu of 1918, that it was the second wave. Oof. That actually, because people went after it was, you know, everyone had their distancing and it seemed to work. And then people said, oh, okay, this thing is over. Uh, and then it, it just exacerbated. Bam, the another flare up. Yeah. yeah. So, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know when the right time is to call it off and say it's safe at this point. I, I'm not sure the answer to that. Um, yeah. Ugh. Kind of, kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, and even. Uh, uh, McCallum for for the uh, Trailblazers, he he was uh, quoted as saying that he thinks 150 players are living quote paycheck to paycheck in the NBA. Yeah, and the minimum salary is what 800 plus thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but if you're the you know if, if you're if you're the 10th, 11th, 12th player on that bench and you're going back and forth between your D League team and the big team, I mean you're and you're just living that way. It's just you know. Life isn't as easy and as glamorous as, as one would think. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah I think that's, some yeah. of the 10th, 11th, and 12th men are earning under $100,000 a year. 
for the NBA. You know, on average, yeah, I, well, yeah. Well, he yes. thought he, he was quoted as saying that he thought 150 of the 450 major players that that are that not not the ones that are going back and forth. But he thought they were living paycheck to paycheck. You know, maybe so much goes to taxes, and you know, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the spending and all that. And, 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 and like, let's face it, I mean, with, with 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 the economy rolling the way it was. Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of those guys were living above their means, yeah. And 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 now they're caught. Yeah, that's that's kind of the typical problem with uh, all the athletes that, that run into financial issues. You know, they go into bad investments. Um, you know, yeah, they'll have an agent or a financial advisor who steals from them. Uh, but most of it seems to be the uh, not not budgeting uh, prudently, let's say. And one right. too many girlfriends with children. Yeah. Oh yeah. What is it? Adrian Peterson has what? 10, 11 children with 10 different women? Yeah. A lot of baby, so, there's a lot of baby mamas out there. That's I mean, for sure. I mean, how, uh, I don't care how wealthy you are. You know, that's a lot of money to be put down. That's a big matzo ball there. Um, <laughs> and then um, you know, I was just reading also that the 2020 baseball season, you know, because again, it hasn't started, you know, people are so bored. They're, they're trying to grasp at anything. Like you said, ESPN is doing this and you guys are doing that. Um, they're talking about, you know, what's the best team of all time? You know, yeah. Who the best yeah, they do that even when times are good. But now that there's nothing to talk about, yeah, it becomes a real big issue for people to talk about. Yeah, I got something to talk about, and maybe we can get to it, you know, after the next break. I'd like to know from either one of you, if, if, if you're having a cookout, give me, give me four players, living or dead, that you would invite to the cookout. Yeah. Uh, Are they for eating food? From any sport? Because, yeah, sport. I, I'd invite Andre the Giant, but, man, if, he, if he's <laughs> not – if I have to feed him, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought about you when I was doing highlights the other night of uh, Rob Gronkowski at this yeah. uh, WrestleMania over the weekend. He went and just pinned a guy and then apparently walks away with this 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 24-7 championship belt. Yeah. I that was funny. Well, I thought he, he jumps off – some huge uh, platform. Yeah, it took out a bunch of guys. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. What, what a great move to get them all together right at that. You know, but they're, they're, now Vince McMahon is saying that he's going back to doing live shows and that he, he's going to try to basically skirt the order <laughs> that cities have that are keeping yeah. him from being able to put, to get, put together live shows with too many people. Okay. No, this man doesn't care. And, and, and what I've said about, you know, people are saying, doesn't he care about uh, the health of his workers? And I said, the, no. the, the next time that Vince McMahon cares about the health of his workers will be the first time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and uh, since you have the hiccups there, uh, Russell, we're going to cut to the next commercial break here. Uh, how many cards will be on the table at the end of a game of Texas Hold'em if there are four <laughs> players? And all stay in the game until the showdown. Math. Yeah, you got to do math. math. Well, that's math. Well, that's hey, that's uh, uh, hey, this, this is all for you, Mr. Jackman. That's right. Oh my okay, God. Gonna yeah. Cut, you're gonna uh, cut our break now. Don't touch that dial. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Bert Glenn and Russell Jackman. Our second trivia question is a math question. And we'll call it sports because it's Texas Hold'em. That's a sport. I mean, can you imagine, you know, those guys having to spend days after days playing poker all It's not a sport. Hours. I'm sorry. It is not a sport. <laughs> right? Look, this, this is more of a sport than freaking <laughs> than, than poker, all right? <laughs> okay, but, but we're going to see if we can answer this question anyway. How many cards will be on the table at the end of a game of Texas Hold'em if there are four players and all stay in the game until the showdown. Mm. You guys know how to play Texas Hold'em? Actually, oh. I do play Texas Hold'em with my friends. But let me try to channel the ghost of Kenny Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Give me the answer. Who just no passed on. No one to fold them. That's right. That's it. All right. Let's see. I'm thinking. Uh, on the table. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to say it's a trick question, and I'm just no, going to say 50. No. I'm going to say 52. No, I'm no, no, say no, 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 it's not, say, trick, it's not a trick question. I'm going to say right. 22. No, 13. 13. Right? Each, each player gets two. Oh, two. Times four is eight, and then there's five cards showing at 13. 
Okay, so now uh, well, uh, math is over. Don't worry, guys. We're not we're not uh, grading you on this. Um, and then uh, Vern, your your question before we went to break had to do with uh, if you had a cookout, who would you invite? Yep. All right. So if you're gonna Russell, why don't you go first on that? Okay, the four guys that I think well. I mean, theoretically, as I said, it would be really interesting to have. I, w I would like to talk to Andre the Giant. That is one guy that I think has stories upon stories upon stories. And the only tough part would be understanding exactly what he was saying. He had kind of a pretty heavy um, accent and wasn't the easiest person. Yeah. To, sure. to, um, and then, obviously, I would really, really love to meet Joe Montana just to say that I met Joe Montana. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking of the optics, Mr. Jackman. At, 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 the, at the picnic table in the backyard, Joe Montana seated next to Andre the Giant. What in the world would that conversation be like? <laughs> exactly. That, you got it right there. Yep. And um, you know who I would really like to also meet, because he's been gone, is Leo Namalini. That was oh, a guy... Yeah. Yeah, that, that has a lot of stories, and he was a big part of sport, the early part of sports here in the Bay Area. And he pro probably has a lot of amazing stories of how things got to where they are. And then the final thing with my favorite baseball player, and that's Buster Posey, just so that I could bring his twins over and have his twins for the same age and only a couple months apart from my twins go and party with, with well, well, go back to Lee Mullen. Mull who is Leo the Namalini. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Remind the audience who that is. Oh, uh, Leo the Leo the Lion Namalini was um, uh, a promoter, and was he also a baseball player? I forgot. With he was uh, back in the day, but he had a lot to do with the early days of promoting wrestling here uh -huh. in in the Bay Area, and he's pretty much a a, a solid sports figure, but kind of goes under the radar with everything else. What about you, Vern? Well, who would you invite? Uh, off the top of my head, I, uh, uh, I'd like to have Babe Ruth over, think of the stories that he would have. Yeah. And then, uh, I like to have Jim Brown. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I talk, talk about, talk about just two giants of their perspective games. Just, just, just talking to each other, just, just trading, you know, back and forth. Uh, so, so that would be two. Who else would I bring over? Uh, You've met a lot of people. That's the other thing. I have, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I have to think about uh, probably Ronnie Lott. Bring yeah. Ronnie Lott over because uh, you know he'll have stories, and he's kind of a historian in his own right, as, as far as a, like a student of the game. And then, jeez, uh, who would I? Who would, um, here, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to throw you, one I'll bring you, I'll, uh, and, and and I'll go. I'll go Bob Euchre because he's funny. <laughs> he's funny, yeah. Funny, got stories. Uh, and, and 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 just kind of can, can can cross all. Oh wait, you know what? You know what? Scratch that. Uh, Joe Namath instead of Bob Euchre. So it says Joe Namath, Jim Brown, uh, Babe Ruth, and and Ronnie Lott. Those are those those would be my four at my cookout. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with a kind of an odd one. Mo Berg. I know who he is. <laughs> okay, Mo Berg was uh, he spoke like seven languages. He was a catcher for, I believe it was the Red Sox. And he went on a barnstorming tour with uh, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig to teach Japan, uh, like the, the game of baseball. And he was sort of a spy. They, they called him the, uh, uh, the catcher as a spy. The movie just came out not too long ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember John that. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I'm sure he's got some very interesting stories, mm -hmm. uh, some baseball and some, some real life. Uh, my favorite baseball player, Willie Mays, always like to, to talk to him. Uh, Will Chamberlain would be kind of interesting. Yeah, you know? I'm sure the stories he he's got uh, are, are quite a bit. And, and he'd bring the babes. Yeah, that's I know. That's kind of why I'm curious. <laughs> Supposedly he was with what ten or twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah. 20, stay on on track. They have to have at least like fifteen show up to the barbecue. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Oh, oh. And, and Cap Anson, so I can punch him in the nose for what he did for the disintegration of uh, baseball. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what started. So, so I'm going to invite him, him. Punch him in the so, nose. So, 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 yeah, invite yeah, him over. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then at the gathering, punch him right in the face. Wow, a little, <laughs> little violence at the cookout. <laughs> nice. <laughs> WrestleMania 58. On the, 
uh, trying to think of who else, like, you know, a uh, football player would kind of be, you know, like someone like Dick Metcalf always kind of uh, appreciated the way he played. It'd be kind, kind of fun. Um, let's see. Anything else, guys, you want to talk about? We've got about five minutes before we uh, need to go to another break. Yeah, um, I just, you know, think that it's been really interesting to see how um, we've been able to reflect on some of the great things that have happened here in the Bay Area in the last 10 years by not having any sports around. It's sort of yeah. caused us to sort of pull the car to the side of the road and look and reflect on like, like last night they showed on, on uh, Sports Center the uh, 50 point, the dual 50 point game between Kobe Bryant and Antoine Jameson. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. And how Anton Jameson had scored 50 points the night before yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. It would be one of the very few times. The only one, the only, time that, the, the only time that the players scored 50 in back-to-back -back games. Yeah. It, it reminded me a couple of things. One is, A, how absolutely horrible the Warriors were in, like, 2003. Yeah. That, that had, like, uh, Bobby Sura. That team had like, oh, yeah. Bobby Sura yeah. and Vontico Cummings and Mookie Blaylock and – Eric Dampier. And so it does remind you like how far the Warriors have come since then. But also, I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but even though Kobe and all his greatness stuff, one thing that I forgot is how many Homer calls um, Kobe Bryant got while going to the basket. I mean, well, I he's, one of the, he's one of those guys, if, if you coughed on him, then that's a foul. I mean, that's yeah. a, but, but you know, he, he worked hard to achieve that kind of lofty status hey how about this one i mean just just for me on a personal side it, 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 it it's giving me cause to kind of sit back and pause and reflect on how fortunate i've been yeah. working in this san francisco market to have attended like the the and and, and covered the four major sporting events that that, that we have uh, just just from working here just covering super bowls yeah. world series Stanley Cup finals. I mean, just, it, 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 even the Olympics, crime any sakes, uh, that, that, that I've been fortunate enough to, to be around and, and, and cover. So, so in, this, in this time when, where we have just nothing as far as games, um, I, it, it really is something to have been around and, uh, in, in, in those kind of environments, even what? golf majors. So yeah. uh, it's, I've, been pretty, I've been pretty fortunate to uh, – to, to, to have this kind of job. Well, I've definitely been counting my blessings because uh, unlike Russell, who has little ones at home pretty much all the time, you know, my kids are out of the house and burn most of your kids are out of the house. And, mm -hmm. and doesn't it feel like Christmas time? I, just, I love having my kids with me at 28 and 23. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I mean, it's, I got to say that uh, we're, uh, no, I'm, I honestly can say I'm not that inconvenienced as compared to a lot of people who are, you know, really struggling with uh, being out of work. But, you know, there's definitely a time when you really want to reflect on, you know, how much your family means to you and uh, just, you know, enjoy their company when you can. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. You hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> enjoy and reflect and appreciate what you got. The relentless nature of sports doesn't really allow you to normally do that. I mean, yeah. that, you know, you go right from one season to another season. The seasons all overlap. And so by the time you're done, let's say the Warriors have won the NBA championship or something like that, well, the Giants season is already going. So you've got to mm -hmm. focus on that. And when the Giants season is wrapping up, well, then the Niners season picks up. So it's like there's always these sort of things that never allow you to sit back and like go, wow, what an amazing set of, of, of victories. Now, when, when, like I'm listening, like the other day on, KG, uh, on KNBR, they were playing the um, uh, uh, game where uh, uh, Matt Cain's perfect game. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it, it was, it was kind of I, – I haven't listened to that game now. Now it was, you know, eight years ago that he did that. And he wow. Signed his, wow. Yeah, he sort of sit back and go, wow, that was eight years ago. Yeah. And, like, wow, yeah. what, what has changed in my life and, and all that? I mean, my, my kids were one years old. Yeah, when, and the, uh, biggest, the, the biggest thing I remember was uh, Gregor Blanco saving his uh, perfect game with a diving catch. Yeah. But there was a yeah. lot more to that game, a lot more of sure. look back and forth and stuff like that when you sit back and listen to the whole thing again. You know, and I'd never do that under normal circumstances because right now there would be, you know, real Giants games going on and, 
and I'd be following the season and be wrapped up in all of that. So it sort of is kind of nice to sort of sit back and say, okay, what, you know, what great things we've achieved and what things we've seen in, our, in, in the last 10 years that we yeah. haven't sat back and reflected on at all. Or just thinking Where's about that? Madison Bumgarner's uh, performance in 2014. Uh, yeah, no, they haven't gotten to that yet. But like tonight on ESPN, they're going to show the game that uh, 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 Cal Ripken uh, beat Lou Gehrig's record oh, yeah. with. And he, and he went around on a horse all, all the way around. That was, that was in fact, it's funny because my wife's not really into baseball. But when that happened, I happened to have TV on, and she was really kind of enthralled with what was going on. <clears throat> Right, and we just sort of gloss by all those sort of things, and, and they're all part of our old sports tapestry, but sometimes we just sit there with sports just so close to our face that we never stand back to it and go, wow, all these things that the Bay Area achieved in, that, in the last 10 years or longer, and, and what, what we have to be proud of and, and what we are, uh, uh, you know, hopefully still going to accomplish when all this stuff is, is taken care of. I can remember my going away party in Baltimore, Maryland at the Mount Washington Tavern. In attendance was Gal Ripken Jr. Uh, I'll always remember that. Uh, yeah, I was going to say because you're from Baltimore. Hey, guys, uh, going to get to our last commercial break. Here's our last trivia question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just as Eve was born of a rib of Adam, what was born out of a basketball? That may, do you understand the question? So Give it's it the son of basketball. I'm, I'm not okay. sure where you're going. Okay. Just as Eve was born of a rib of Adam, what was born out of a basketball? In other words, where do you get these questions from? This is not trivia. <laughs> Are you talking about what was born out of the game of yeah, yeah, basketball? Well, no. Uh, like what, what, what kind of a sports thing? Like you, you wouldn't say like a hockey puck, right? I mean, you wouldn't take the inside. You, you wouldn't take from a basketball and turn it into a hockey puck. But you could take something from a basketball and it turned into something that is sports related. All right, that's our trivia question. Sorry guys, right. you know what, the coronavirus kind of makes you come up with these weird things. I'm okay. gonna come up with a trivia next week, man. All right, there you go. Stay with us, Sport Econ 101. We'll be right back with some closing comments. Welcome back to Sport Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn, and Russell Jackman, <coughs> excuse me, our uh, last trivia question was kind of a weird stump type question. Just as Eve was born of a rib of Adam, what was born out of a basketball? Volleyball? Yes. Wow. Really? Folks, you got it. That's wow. right. I, I, that, the, the only reason why I say that is this, and that's, um, it also is a tiny little mean story I'd like to throw in here, and that's uh, Giannis. Uh, uh, a, a ton of compo has said that he Giannis can't practice. Compo. There you Thank go. You. <laughs> he, he said he can't practice basketball because he doesn't have a hoop. You know, that he's been saying that he, I don't know how these multimillionaires don't own their own basketball hoops, but he doesn't have a basketball hoop. The story is about Joe Dumars and how he learned how to play basketball. His father was, was so poor. Um, but he, he knew that Joe Dumars had the skill to play basketball. So he took a door and he cut it in half. He took a bicycle and he took the rim off the bicycle, knocked all the spokes off of it, nailed the, the uh, hoop to the door, and then gave um, Joe Dumars a volleyball with, that had all the skin worn off of it. And it was just basically just a little like rubber ball. And he told, uh, uh, he told um, Joe, start shooting. And that's how Joe Dumars became. Very good. So maybe the great okay. uh, Giannis can find himself a door, a bike <laughs> rim, a volleyball skin. Very and, well. And All right, guys. Practice. We got to cut out for today. Here's our thoughts for the day. Teamwork means never having to take all the blame yourself. Isn't that true? And uh, not Rogers, really. <laughs> and Will Rogers said, even if you are on the right track, You'll get run over if you just sit there. It reminds me of the one that says, uh, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Just make sure that it's not, it's not an oncoming train. There you go. All right. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions, which uh, Russell, I'm sure, will come up with a couple. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We're wishing you... 
the best. We'll see you next week. Good night, America. Adios, America. <laughs>